everyone. Welcome to episode 390 of This Is Whole Life. You know we're digging deeper into the message, except we can only go so far this week because we had a special guest and he was unavailable to be here on the Tuesday, the week of Thanksgiving. You know, we just were. I, I would just say <laughs> thank you, Freud. I am so grateful you preached for me this last week. So there is that. Thank you. We we will take what we can, what we can get on that. Yeah. No. And we're gonna get to him a little bit more in just a second. But if you're listening to this on the Wednesday as normal, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow because we won't hear from us again. <laughs> you're still a day away. Just you're keep that right. Just keep, <laughs> you might keep, keep, keep moving forward. Get your shopping done, whatever. Yeah, if you don't have a turkey by now, you're a turkey. <laughs> if you're listening to us while you're standing in line at Publix. That's right. What's yeah. what's left? That last three-pound turkey that nobody wanted. You might not make it all the way through this episode waiting in line at Publix, but actually Publix will probably get you through, but they maybe some will. of the others, like, uh, we won't call anybody out. But Did anyone notice that some of the Publixes now... Have self checkouts, really? Yeah, yeah. If you go over to uh, Maitland Crossing, huh. they have the self checkout, and I'm like, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I I but, prefer self checkouts yeah, too. too. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Like oh, when yeah. you're going like on a full bore shopping trip, I'm at Costco with a cart and a half. You like you want it? But I don't know. I don't know. Like Booyah. if if I'm picking up like ten items or something like that, then I, I like the self-checkout. But if I've got like a whole cart full, I don't like it because there's like, I don't know, maybe I'm not shopping in the right place, but there's not enough space to... Oh like, man, I am the person that will stack 67 bags in that little <laughs> checkout area <laughs> instead That's of it. going through one. I might need to yeah. learn from you then because I have not figured that out. I'm like, I'm... Because I get all... Of, it's like, I don't like it because like I'm trying to get stuff out of the grocery cart and then I'm trying to scan that through. I put it, it loads up in that area. And then there's still stuff left in the cart, but I start putting stuff in the cart. And I'm like really afraid that the people, the security are going to think I'm stealing stuff. It's, and oh, you just, you tie up the top of the bag and then you put it back in. And then, mm-hmm. then they Because that says I'm not stealing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Just tie it when the, you are stealing and yeah, then it the won't say you're stealing. Code so. of, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Huh. Uh, I don't know. I no, don't know. The, I, I would love to hear from our listeners with it, what their <laughs> take is on that. Because that's why I like the checkout because you can put the stuff all on the thing and then they have another another cart there for you. I feel like that's what should happen at the self-checkout. There should be another cart mm. to put that, stuff that, in. that you just put, you know, take the stuff and then I'd be okay with it. But I just don't, I don't like, st- and if you're stacking stuff on top of it, you have to be really strategic when you, when you check the bread through, because if you're stacking, you got to wait till the end. All the mm-hmm. things that go on the top, go up you and uh, go up where the uh, seat is in the cart. Yeah. And those go on top last. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then they yeah. go back in that part and then the rest go back into the cart after. Yeah. And if you were an introvert, you would rather learn how to play Tetris, then go up to the cashier and say, hi, how are you? Fine. How are you? I'm fine. Seriously? Yeah, see, well, because I got my, you see I the my, same I, thing every yeah. time. And the it's grocery just, people are the like most a... least intimidating people on earth. Oh, they're not intimidating. I just <laughs> don't want to talk to them. Did you find everything today? <laughs> Duh. Uh, Am I standing in line with my groceries? Yes. That's why I got in line, because I didn't find it, and I wanted you to help me. <laughs> you take a break and come help me do some shopping? <laughs> I'd like to try that out, see how that goes. Yeah. Well, I'll report back next week after I will. you do that. I'll do yeah. that. I, I, <laughs> Just, I'll get into line with one thing. Did you find everything? No. I, I have think, 88 other things I need to get, and I was hoping you could help me. I think you Let's should do right that now. Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. What about then? Let that. me know yeah. how that works out. Where's the tofurkey at? <laughs> Next week on the podcast, we find out how it went with Ken shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on the <laughs> Yeah. Next week, we have it. a special location that we'll be uh, Ooh, taping this maybe in. Maybe we could do a live. Maybe we could do 400 from the, from the checkouts at Publix and just interview people. Think yeah. we could, think we could, anyone work at Publix and get us uh, in on that? That'd be kind of mm. fun. Huh. Or honestly, any retail the, place. But, yeah, the self checkout. That'd be area. fun. You just interview people at. Random. I take it Publix is your favorite place to shop. I don't. That... I don't ever shop there. No? The only reason I was there was because they have the only, at least locally, that we found. It ha- they have the only gluten free pasta that we like. So okay. when it's when it's time to buy pasta, we go to. Publix. Publix really and quick. other than that, I, I don't shop at Publix. I was just, I tell you, one of my deep disappointments when I moved to Orlando is discover there are no Piggly Wigglies here. Right? Mm. Piggly Wiggly. I Come love on. the pig. Piggly Wiggly. You go to I, the, just, I just like to say it. 
Piggly Wiggly. When I was in Wisconsin, I was like, mm, I don't know about them. They had Piggly Wigglies in Wisconsin. Oh yeah. What? The pig I is that was, big. I think that I thought that was a South thing. The pig is big. The pig is big in Wisconsin. It is. There was a Piggly Wiggly in in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. No. It, it closed down, but well, it was the, there. Stop the, the, pig, it. the pig went through a real shrinking process yeah. about twenty the, years ago. The pig is big, and he's back. Okay. And so I, I was in Union Grove this uh, yes yesterday, about this time, in fact. And when we drove in, I'm like, look, there's a pig. And there's a Dairy Queen, like all within a mile of our destination. I can see why they moved you. Well, you know, yeah, that makes sense. It's, you know, yeah. two good things you need: how to eat school treats and the pig. All right, so this little diversionary uh, topic here. This this one's for <laughs> Dave, one of our okay. uh, long distance listeners of the podcast up in North Carolina. I, Ooh, one of my friends from way back in the day. I was up in North Carolina this last weekend and got to spend a little time with Dave. And he was, yeah, I couldn't believe he was telling me stuff from the podcast. And I was like. You're not listening to the podcast every week. Oh, yeah. He goes, I love how you guys talk about food all the time. I was like, <laughs> well, thank you, Dave. Really, yeah, Dave. I mean, we enjoy it, too. I said, because you like it, Dave, we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> That's right. So, <laughs> Thanks, Dave. So, you know, Piggly Wiggly and Publix and Kroger and Winn-Dixie and Aldi. Walmart and Aldi. Costco. Costco. Mm. All those. That was our food for this week, right? Nice. That was our food diversion. That's our food diversion. About it. I like it. Yeah. So are we are uh, we kind of uh, are we kind of wiggling a little bit because we uh, because we didn't preach this week and Freud's not here to, to def- probably to, to keep us on to track. Do that. But yeah. Freud understands, and that's what I want everyone to understand about Freud. Yeah, Freud was like, "Look, I get Thanksgiving. It's about family. It's about food." <laughs> And it's about football. football. That's right. Go Pack Go, Thursday against Detroit. Probably going to be an L, but we're going to be Go Pack and Go anyway. So All right. there you go. Hmm. I like it. We'll and be f- and praying Freud, for you, Andy. You? Yeah, I'm not praying hey, for no, your we team, won. but I'm praying for you. Just. <laughs> we, won, we won this week. I'm, I'm a happy guy. All right. Oh, well, you know, I'm happy. We This year you have to take what you can get. So Freud was our guest speaker, and Freud yeah. is going to be transitioning. So what? how should we introduce him? Is Current? So, yeah, so Freud um, has been our family life, uh, right? family life pastor um, since he, he came on a little over a year ago. It's been that and, long uh, and then with um, Justin Kamani retiring at the end of January, Freud will be actually moving into our member care pastoral role. So, but, so he's still our family life pastor at the moment. At the moment. Okay. Yep. His first English sermon... I thought it came out really well. He was worried. He's like, this is the first I think time he I did better than some of us in this room are doing right now. I think <laughs> oh, that's what wow. yeah. I, my you know, kids I, were mocking me relentlessly this last week because <laughs> I apparently cannot pr- uh, pronounce certain words correctly. And, oh. and they in were, French or just in, in, in English? Oh, it's, okay. it's sad to me that somebody who speaks four languages speak my, my language better than I do. I, so. I know Freud was like, I, I really feel more comfortable speaking in French or Portuguese or Spanish. And I said, I know you exactly how you feel. I, I, I'm much more comfortable speaking in the one language that I speak. Yeah. Even though I, I got his point, he was trying to show like, hey, you feel excluded if you don't understand mm-hmm. the language or the lingo or yeah. all those things that happen. But it sounded, I don't know, French sounds really nice. My wife speaks you can just say, a bit. You can say just about anything in French and you're like, ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that sounds really <laughs> pleasant. And then During rehearsal, he said, he, he, he did the French bit and he said, did you understand anything that I said? I was digging back into my high school French and I said, yeah, I think you said this and this and this. And he started laughing and he said, I did not say any of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me feel better, Melanie. Yeah, me too. Well, I didn't take any French and I slept in a truck over the course of in a plane over the last couple hours, so I didn't stay at Holiday Inn Express. Oh, good. I thought you were talking about high school. No, That's well, okay. I probably did that too in high okay. school, but either way. <laughs> so let's get on. Freud, great job. I really yes, I really enjoyed yes, his sermon. He had great illustrations, and an, um, it was a shorter sermon. He so. had maybe one of the cutest illustrations mm-hmm. I've Come uh, on, that was pandering. In a while. Yeah. That, that was, was pandering. cheating just yeah. a little bit to put <laughs> that pictures of That was pandering for applause. There. <laughs> yeah, I said, Rochelle, I think, uh, I think, you know, I can't let Freud outdo us. We, she's like, yeah, no. So, uh, so, but yeah, I guess I guess Freud will get to hang on to that, having the cutest because I don't know. Oh man, Nicholas, that was that little yeah. that picture was so cute. Oh, of the Very. little glasses, oh. he is just. Precious. I do like yeah. that he did say that he can read without the glasses. Yes. They're not his. And I was like, well, maybe. I was just impressed that his baby is reading. reading yeah. I know. <laughs> it's like, uh, wow, that's impressive. Touche. We love you, Freud. Uh, don't you know that was uh, that made me laugh hard. But anyway. Thanksgiving is absolutely my favorite holiday. Fall in general, which on the trip up to Wisconsin, got to drive through from about 
Oh man, Southern Florida. Well, Northern Florida had a little bit. By the time we got just before Atlanta, the colors were perfect. There was still, really there were leaves on the trees yet. Really, they weren't all gone, but they looked good. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. That was this last weekend. Uh, yeah. That was literally what Sunday morning. Because midday? we, I was up in North Carolina, and then we drove up into the mountains of Virginia. Yeah, and then we drove all the way from Virginia back here to Florida yesterday, and. Yeah. There weren't a lot of leaves on the trees left. No. In, in well, that as area. soon as you got north of it, like as soon as we were outside of Atlanta, just a little bit north, by the time we hit Calhoun, it was like the trees were bare. Okay. There was not much All left. Right. So it was just, it was only a short, and I was like, man. So you hit the peak season yeah. in uh, Adairsville then. <laughs> and it, yeah, probably pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Rome, I remember Rome, coming by yeah. Rome and Asilla. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, and, Rome is just right, right yeah. next to Calhoun. From your yeah, Rome. By the time we got there, it was getting. I it lived in Calhoun for almost two years. Did you? I did. See, Osilla and Rome. You should know about two. If you're a true crime podcast listener, you'll know those names and know those are two places you don't want to live. Calhoun, uh, Osilla, Osilla, and, uh, and Rome. Rome. Yeah, Rome. police not so good. You can add Calhoun to. The- <laughs> <laughs> well, you can add Calhoun to the list. I, I have no idea, but that's funny. There's a lovely hospital there, but outside of that. Yeah, there's a hospital there. Yeah. Well, and and I think that even though how much I love fall and I love Thanksgiving, family and friends. I mean, Freud kind of hit it on the on the mark in a, in a real general way. But family and friends can be amazing. You know, sitting around eating that holiday meal. It's all the good food. It's all the feels. It's all the things you remember. But there's a lot of tension that typically comes along with it if you're like a normal family. And maybe, maybe. I don't know what you're talking about, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> maybe there's a little dread. And then you realize that really Thanksgiving is like a, well, depending how you celebrate. If you do like a weekend, that's like a weekend. It's like a whole year packed into a weekend. Mm. Not as long, of course, but you get all the little things. You get the little jabs. You get the little could have. You get the, you know, the uh, someone is going to look at you or listen to what you say and they're going to judge you <laughs> based on something that goes along. I mean, we all do it. And those are the people that are close to us, people that know us best, people that maybe will give us a, a little bit of a pass or they're like, ah, well, you know, that's just Randy or that's just Melanie. I mean, what can you do with her? That's just the way she is, right? And then you realize it's like this this whole thing and you go, wow. No wonder it's so hard to integrate into a new community. What I mean, if your family thinks this, what do new people think? Or at least for that opening period until you're sure, and then how long does it take for them to catch up? Because I really felt Freud's Freud's angst mm-hmm. <laughs> as he described sitting in the car when he or because he went back to the car, saw the doors open, and it was like, oh man, round tables. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. not. And, and it surprised me because. Freud just strikes me as someone who's really outgoing and yeah. will talk to anyone, and he's oh, got yeah. that friendly. So it that made me think, like, have I have I missed a side of Freud? I don't know about. Well, he was he he did have the extra thing of he hadn't been here very long, That's and true. English was new, and he was he, he just knew a, he felt a headache coming on yeah. <laughs> looking at those tables. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he mentioned that. You know, again, w- with those struggles, and I, I can't imagine, I mean, he speaks more f- fluently in multiple languages, but at this time didn't know English very fluent, apparently. It made me think about you, Melanie, right off the bat, because there's so many things as multicultural as our church is, and as many people that come to visit because they're in the Orlando area, and we try really hard not to create inclusive language mm-hmm. Or not inclusive, exclusive, exclusive language, language. Mm-hmm. that will make other people feel, ex- you know, like, oh, I, I don't get the joke or I don't get what they're talking about. From your perspective, I, I feel like that's something we work really hard at and do very well. How does that affect how we worship together, though? Well, I think it makes a difference in a, in a few different ways. I mean, like you said, it 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 impacts the kinds of kinds of things we say. And I think all of us, as we think about when we're planning our worship and we're thinking about um, who is going to be there or who may be there, mm. um, what what can we do to make as many places at this table as we possibly can so that nobody feels like they're sitting at the kids' table <laughs> or, they're, or they're not welcome at the table? So that's, that's a high priority for us. And Ken looks really awkward at the kids' table. You know, you're tall and, you know, and, and the kids are down here. You know, that, that may- <laughs> Ken looks really awkward anyway right now. I'm just going to say. <laughs> he 
he I, may or may not be in costume. As we were <laughs> he's just he's messing with us. So we're, uh, I was waiting to see if this was going to come we've up. We've been preparing. We've been preparing for the uh, for the oh what is it, for. Uh, Retreat Saturday Night a, Live a, church a, retreat. And there's and, uh, a, ah. So my costume came in and I was trying it and decided it'd just be fun to sit here in the costume it's, and do podcasts. And since we have no video cameras, it's perfect. You're just going to, those of you out there are just going to have to imagine what this costume will be and then really just remember hard to back. talk about anything serious. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> All I'm saying is if you haven't been to church retreat, this is definitely the year that you. <laughs> It's the year you don't want to miss. Oh my goodness! Yeah, this is this is. Uh, I was talking to someone this weekend, and they were like, "You definitely yeah. not want me at the kids' table." <laughs> anyway. Yeah, and they're like, "Man, we haven't been to church retreat in in years," and I'm just like, Man, "This is the year." Yeah, this if if there was the year that you're thinking maybe this is the time that I should be at church retreat. Please, please know that this this the year is, to be uh, at the table. This, this would be the one. One of the things I liked about the sermon was that he he described the travels of Jesus and the disciples in Mark 4, 5, and 8, in that even nature <laughs> <laughs> pushed back against Jesus going and doing and serving and being with the people that needed him. And it, I guess it was just a little bit of a light on, like, if, you know, if Jesus had some pushback, maybe it's not unreasonable to think we'll have as much or more. And we might not be as uh, equipped to deal with it as he is. I Once. always love it when somebody brings something. I had. I I just never really thought about those passages about Jesus going to the other side in the the way that Freud, yeah, um, the perspective that Freud showed shared on that that there was this, you know, that that Jesus went to the other side that he intentionally went where maybe he wouldn't have been expected or maybe where he didn't exactly where he didn't fit in. But to let others know that that they belonged and that they were a part of what he was trying to do, I just thought that was a really neat perspective. The three stories where Jesus went to the other side, and then that the wind was against him, and that yeah, that oftentimes um, the wind is against you when you are trying to go to the other side and trying to be in a place that's new, that's different. And I love that perspective. If you mm-hmm. haven't, if you have not watched the sermon, you really should. It just the whole thing was good, but that alone for me was worth the price of admission. It was, it was just a really, really solidly thought out, um, you know, look at that text and or those texts, and I, I really liked that. I thought it was really, really smart. He followed that right afterwards, putting these two things together that. He said, God's table is always full of people, a place of communion, fellowship, and relationships. And then he went on to cite some pretty startling graphics he put up Mm -hmm. on screen about how people in community, kids in community, overall, even though it may make us really, really uncomfortable, it's a place we really need to be for our mental health, our well-being. And just that it makes sense that God's table is a place of refuge with those. And then he, he went on a little bit further to just make sure he we weren't confusing him with Sigmund Freud. Right. <laughs> uh, but that healthy relationships, he said, is one of our greatest assets. And I thought if there was something we could all take into Thanksgiving that, you know, maybe there's relationships, there's people we might see over the holidays that maybe we don't have the healthiest relationship with that maybe we could, uh, you know, Make one extra step, let the wind pass us by, lean into it a little bit. Wow, you just really shed light on the whole phrase, prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm hoping it's not total enemies, but maybe, you know, someone you just need a little, you know, take aside and... Maybe in a, a sorry, an apology. Uh, hey, it's good to see you. <laughs> you know, that is, is that is interesting, though, because you would think you look at that text and you would think, why in the presence of my enemies? Like, it seems yeah. like a much if, if, he, if he said, I prepare a table for you in the presence of your friends like that, that that seems so much more inviting. And but when Freud was talking about the tables that he went to and how. It, they were full of strangers. And for him, just that that distance and that not knowing made them feel like enemies, even though they weren't enemies. But it eventually became a table yeah. of friends. Yeah. I, and it, he he started talking about, as he kind of started to wrap it up, I thought the 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 idea of how he did 
or how he used to view religion. And then he went mm-hmm. to the definition. I love that. Yeah. And I that was that. so much friend that he said, we're turning strangers into friends and family at whole life. Mm-hmm. So tell me again, the, he said religion is based off of the word that means... To bind uh, to or bind connect. To bind or to connect. Mm-hmm. Boy, isn't that crazy? Because that is not the way that most of us would define right. religion today. It right. is yeah. something that divides, yes. that pushes people apart. And I love that, that I... Again, Freud taught me something new because I didn't know that that's that, you know, that when you get back to the roots of the word religion, that it means to bind together. I, mm-hmm. I didn't understand that. So that was something I, another thing that I learned this week. And I, I love that. Yeah. I love that that's what, that's what good religion does, right? Good yeah. religion binds people together. Bad religion pushes people pushes apart yep. and, and creates division. So love that. That was, I thought that was really, again, just really well done, Freud. Yeah. He had a, his message was compact, but he went through it, and I don't know, it's kind of hard to ignore his smile while yeah. he was preaching, too. And so I felt like he had everybody right there, and then, you know, he did play the Nicholas card. So it, it was you know. well played, though. But I it mean, was well, yeah. you know? If you got the cards, you got to play them, and That's that, was, right. that was totally well played. And then as he closed everything out, he said, my religion is about fellowship and community. I don't feel called to change people's behaviors or habits. I believe I'm called to connect and serve. I'm called to prepare a table so everyone can find community and have communion at God's table. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. That's such a, a, an assuring, reassuring statement that I think we all share in here at Whole Life as staff and how we how we approach things and to understand religion, to bind and to connect. What a cool way to to look at that and to to realize what God's trying to do instead of it religion almost being a almost a dirty word Mm -hmm. to people and sometimes to us it's like oh i'm not religious well maybe you should be because if that means bind to connect maybe we should be maybe we should own that one a little bit more and i really again just going back to what freud said at the very beginning of the sermon is just how important relationships are that we have an epidemic of loneliness right now really across the world in the United States in particular, there just people are, are, are very lonely and there's a lot of loneliness out there. And I do believe that good religion is the antidote to that, that c- the community that Christ wanted to set up is what can help with that. And, you know, going to Freud's point, it, it sometimes it, the wind can be against you when you're thinking about getting up and joining in an activity, a community activity type of thing. I, I, you know, if you're like me, uh, I've been invited to events and I'll be like, I don't want to go. I'm so tired. (laughs) The week has been so long. I don't want to do that. And then I'll go and I'll be really glad that I did, that I went uh, after it's over. But beforehand, if you said, is this going to be good for you? I would have said, well, I'm going to go do it because I'm obligated or I'm supposed to do it. And afterwards I'm like, I'm really glad I went and did it because it was just good for me. It was what I needed. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, one of the, the, th- the things I love is about this message is, it is it's just a really good reminder that sometimes the wind can be against you, but it's worth it to, to, to find the, you know, the energy to make your way. And there's a time to rest too. So I think that's, that's worth saying. So there's, there are times where it is, it is a good thing to stay and get the rest that you need. Yeah. Um, but I think that, that, too much of that, I think sometimes our society has taken that too far and we miss out on the benefits that com- the good community does have. That brings with it, yeah. Well, I, I thought it was interesting that I'm a big Grammarly user in everything that I do. And Grammarly is um, doesn't really care for the word religion. Mm. Every time I use the word religion in my script today, it said, choose a synonym. <laughs> and in red, it puts religion and crosses it out and puts belief and then it's like, oh, well, that belief wasn't good enough. I'll give you two. Normally, it only ever gives you one suggestion of how to replace a word. And this one's like, no, 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 no. How about my religion, red, crossed out, my faith is about fellowship. So, you know, maybe it really is more of a word that people really don't like to use or they feel like it doesn't set the right tone. And, well, I do. Uh, I think that religion is one of those things that most of us have kind of grown to understand that you know, that religions are always dividing people. Like uh, if you're, you're either, if you're a part of my religion, then you're with me and everybody else is against us, this, that, and other. And, and I don't, again, I don't think that is good religion. No. I think that's, seems very political. And one of the things that, by the way, that, that Freud didn't mention in this sermon, but um, because I had to do a little preparation for Psalm 23 when I was reading through Kenneth Bailey's book, 
the Good Shepherd, he really points out how the language in there is that the that God is preparing the table himself, which in a Middle Eastern mind would have been a really weird idea because um, the king in that time and that place was not the one that was going to prepare the table. The, mm. the It was going to be a servant. It was going to be somebody else that was that was going to prepare the table. And, and the language in this, we're thinking shepherds, but the, the language in this has shifted now to that of a king um, preparing a banquet for, for subjects. And... And a king would never do that work. Yeah. That was that was servant's work. That was somebody else's work to do. And yet God himself, the, the psalmist basically says God is so intimate with the psalmist that God prepares the table. And does that work. Does too. that work. Hmm. Um, the work of a servant, which yeah. goes back to Jesus preparing, the, uh, you know, in 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 washing the, the feet. feet. Yeah, I was just saying. And, 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 that, and that. so it goes back to that idea that that for God, like God is not a God that, that expects to be served, but rather God is the servant, and those of us who, who follow are expected to be servants as well. Now, Kenneth Bailey, was that the book I recommended? It was not. You, no. you Yours no, was Philip, Philip, Philip Keller. Keller. Oh, okay, right. Um, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I but, but way to get that in there. Yeah, way to make sure. I, I, is this I three podcasts in a row? I couldn't or? remember if that was the book I had recommended or not. So. Your book is still excellent. I, I want to say it's a really yeah. yeah. good book. I kind of forgot there. We just got confused. So. That's all right. Yeah. Thank you. I totally Appreciate understand that. what you needed to do there. Yeah, good. Um, from the chat, Haley wanted to know, does Freud preach in French normally? If so, where? I'd love to attend. Thank you. <laughs> so Haley Well, um, Haley, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take it in English for a while, but I'm sure that we could probably talk Freud into doing a sermon in French at some point for us, maybe. We could uh, record it we, and put it up. You know, they may, maybe they have someone from the archives he could send you. Maybe one of these days we can uh, we can get him here. to do we, a we translation. Should, we actually in should ask Freud when he comes back if any of his sermons because he was a pastor in Switzerland mm-hmm. for I think seven, seven years. years right. yeah. So if any of the sermons from the churches that he pastored there are on the internet that we could yeah. link in there, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. So we'll check into that, Haley, and we'll get back to you. All right. Rod said, wonderful punchline on the sermon. Religion is community. Thanks, Freud. Nice. Rod, we agree. Um, Jared said, okay, and I think Jared, I don't know how I missed this again, but Jared said, two weeks ago on November 4th, during the sermon on the sheep and how God saves us, I asked a question that was missed in the podcast. Would you mind answering it this week? Of course. If I missed it, of course we're going to do it. I wanted to know what we should hold on to when God isn't doing what he's famous for, like not doing more than we ask or think he can, that we could even imagine. Does that just mean he's not done yet? Or is there anything more tangible than hope that we could hold on to? <laughs> tangible than hope. Wow, yeah. Man, I always assume it's that he's not done yet and that there's something going on that I don't understand or I haven't seen or I missed. So my prayer is usually like, look, just stamp it on the side of a two by four and hit me upside the head. So when I look in the mirror, but do it in reverse. When I look in the mirror, I don't have to read backwards and take notes just so I can see it. Cause I'd rather just do whatever it is I'm supposed to do or learn whatever I'm supposed to learn. And that doesn't always work either. Cause I think it just has to be in that time. But I don't know about hope. I think that sometimes the things we can hang on to are what God has done for us in the past. That's something that you can hang on to when what you're wanting him to do in the present isn't happening the way that you want to. You can mm. hold on to some of the things that he's done in the past. But I do think that sometimes as uncomfortable as it is to say that that the only thing there is to hold on to is hope. I think that there are times where that's that is what that's, you got. That's it. And it's and it and it can feel um, a little bit unsatisfying at times. And you can hear that in the Psalms. You can hear that in Job's words. You can hear that, honestly, in Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, my God, uh, you know, are on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, so as uncomfortable it is to say, sometimes the hope is is what there is. Yeah. Melanie, you're shaking your head. You, are you, uh, I was nodding. You were nodding. I was. I, was nodding. I thought at first it looked like. Mm. No, no, no. I was. I was just thinking about times when I felt like, you know, God wasn't what doing what God had promised, 
and um, thinking about just I'm, I'm not talking about uh, his situation. I'm talking about just my own situation, but having to evaluate whether that was actually what was promised to me or not. Hmm. Um, I think sometimes we take certain promises out of context and then expect God to fulfill promises he made to someone else to us. Mm, so just just for me personally, sometimes if I find myself in a place where I think, well, why aren't you following through? I have I, I have to kind of evaluate. Wait wait a minute, did is that what was promised? Um, so why did I why do I think that or why do I yeah, feel that way? Yeah. Huh. Well, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. If it's not, if uh, maybe it's if we see it happen to someone else, we just assume that that's for us as well. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Aaron said, is service the answer to feeling disconnected or that no one can really understand you or relate to your experience so you feel alone and isolated and that you have no real support system, no brotherhood or tribe in the church? Does service, is service that answer? I don't think it hurts anything ever having service, but. Yeah, I think it, I think, I think it tends to be one of the answers. Hmm, okay. Um, I think that there are others. I think that I don't think that service always makes you feel connected. I think that I've unfortunately been in enough churches over enough time that I've seen people who have served a lot still feel very lonely, hmm. um, and and sometimes unappreciated for the service they put in. So, you know, when somebody comes to me and says I don't feel particularly connected at church, one of the things I'll say so, you know. Are, is, what where are you involved in the church? Are you just do you have a Sabbath school that you're attending regularly? Is there a are you helping with you know greeting teams or with music or AV? Are you um, open to being in a small group? Are you in a small group? Are you willing to lead a small group? Those are those are areas that will that we'll check in on. Um, it will usually be a first step. And there's been people who have said, "Yep, I do all those things, and yet I still feel isolated and lonely." And mm-hmm. Then that's when I think sometimes it's it's good to have maybe a little bit more in depth conversation, maybe with uh, maybe with somebody who's who's more trained with in psychology and that sort of thing to say, you know, maybe there's is there a deeper reason that that is yeah. there, it, not your fault, but just something that that's there that that you need to process through why that's happening, why you're you know, again, if you're if you're feeling isolated, I think it's something that's very fair to to talk about. And to say, hey, I'm, um, you know, this is how I'm feeling, and to have that conversation with our, one of our pastoral team, and and see what we can, what we can do to try to work on that. We want people who attend Whole Life to feel connected, to yeah. feel like they're loved and cared about, that they have purpose, that they have meaning. That if if they weren't at, at a part of the Whole Life community, or they they stepped out for a week or two that they would be no, that it would be noticed that they weren't there. Um, that you know it might not be that everybody notices that you're not there, but there would be a group of people who'd be like, "Hey, where was Ken this last week? Um, I I see Freud is preaching. Where you know Ken yeah. is everything okay, Ken? Um, you know we all want to be noticed when we're when we're not around and have people care that we're there. And so those are things that um, as a staff we're we keep working on trying to create more and more opportunities yeah. for people to to find engagement and uh, in connection. Yeah, because there is a psychological value to serving. I'm trying to remember where I heard it. Maybe you mentioned this research, Ken, I don't remember, um, about people who were um, research subjects who were asked to serve someone that they didn't particularly like. Then later on, after having served them, they felt bonded to them and ended up defending them. Is that I don't think familiar? I did that. I, okay. I would like to take credit for it. But I don't think <laughs> no, that was the, in the book I recommended. The <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember reading that, so I don't think maybe it's that me. was uh, maybe that was in the checkout line. That oh, you, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. That was I was, a, it must have been a head. Or it was headlines. Jeff. That he's not here either, so maybe it was. Oh, Jeff. maybe it was Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. That's like good. That. I think another thing that you can um, sometimes do to help yourself out is just think about all the good things that are going on in your life too. At times. Yeah. I think that sometimes it's also okay just to to wallow a little bit. Like, you know, life isn't fun right now and here's the things that aren't fun about it. Yeah. You know, sometimes it helps just to get it out. On a self-devaluation, that's not I think that's probably pretty good. It's better than denial. 
better than <laughs> it trumps <laughs> denial. Okay, all right. No, that's that's. Uh, I can agree there. No, I, th- I think though too being involved definitely, and that speaking for myself, it's always nice to be involved in some area where someone again will they will notice if you're missing because you were supposed to be there or if they see you and maybe you just don't look as cheery. Like if you saw me today, you'd say, Randy, you okay? Like a little, little short on sleep, uh, eyes hurt, you know, uh, headache for the last two days, trying to get rid of, need some sleep. Uh, but yeah, no, otherwise I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be participating in the room. Yes, so, but Randy, we would definitely miss you if it was time to do podcast <laughs> and you were not here. <laughs> I can assure you, we would miss you very much. <laughs> so, see, it, feel, it feels good to be missed. So, and I'll always shout out those Stevens ministers that we have here at the yeah. church if it's something that they can help with, yeah. and uh, definitely reach out to them. Um, the link is in the show notes again. Uh, we're leading up to them needing people to also be care receivers and uh, caregivers. And, and caregivers. They're going to be doing a training coming up in January. Mm-hmm. So, if it's something you feel called to, or if you're not sure what it totally is about. You can reach out to them via the web page, and either Pam or Deanna will reach out to you. And yeah. you can't even if even if you decide not to, you can't go wrong talking to Pam or Deanna. Well, so. one of the things sometimes that we find is that there are people who will who maybe feel like they they'd like to be a, a giver, a mm-hmm. caregiver, and maybe what they really actually need is to be actually more of the receiver <laughs> at that point in at that life. Point, yeah. um, so, and vice versa, I suppose to a certain extent. But the the point is great to talk to Pam and Deanna about about Stephen Ministers and just, you know, take a look at that. Yep. And holidays are coming up, so, you know, get get your spot in for January, and then that'll be a, a cool new thing you can start for the new year. Mm-hmm. I'm a little sad, though, that, you know, we're done with next week. Is That's it. That's the Psalm 23 wrapped up. Can't be too sad. We're moving into Christmas. Yeah. You'll have to come and see. Oh, come and see. Come and see. Oh, that's oh. I just see what I did. Dum 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 dum. Ken just let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> that was it right there. Come and see. Find that cat. Are we? Have, maybe we can. Do we have like a, how many weeks is that going to be? Four. Four, four mm-hmm. weeks. Yeah. Do we have a special cat picture we can send everyone if they come all four weeks or something? <laughs> like cat with. Well, Christmas trees? why don't you? Why don't I work this that? week and see if you see a picture of a cat? I will just say that. <laughs> Next oh, week. that's funny. You say, "Oh yeah, look at that." Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh man, man, Indeed. I don't even think you know what you did there. <laughs> I probably don't, but uh, there's a cat. I see a cat right now. Yeah, sitting across from me. Yeah, yeah. Your t-shirt. Why are you looking at Ken? Oh, my t-shirt. <laughs> okay. I mean, I didn't know where you were going, so I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to keep up. It's been. Yeah, why, are, why are you looking at me, Randy? I know. I, oh, no. <laughs> wow, guys, I'm just. I'm just telling you. You just. You have no idea what you're in for. Saturday Night Live, live from Galakwa. You will laugh. I promise. You yeah. will be. In, you, you will be will entertained. Laugh. You will cry. <laughs> But mostly you'll laugh. <laughs> but mostly, mostly you'll, you'll laugh. laugh. All right. Well, you know what? Happy Thanksgiving. I really hope that if yeah. you have a, you know, you have all your favorites on the Keep table. Keep your eyes on the road. Favorites. Pay attention. We know you're you're driving somewhere probably listening yeah. to this. So. Could be. Favorites yeah. on, at, or around the table. You could be flying. You could be in the TSA true. land right now. It's just true. trying to not get nervous that you're going to miss your flight. Or, or you could be at your relative's line. house, hiding somewhere underneath yeah. a bed, listening to us. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Locked in the bathroom. Where did they go? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So and and take it seriously. You know, uh, I flew front Frontier Air back from Milwaukee to Orlando last night, and they changed my flight times three times mm. within forty five minutes. So just get there early. Yeah. And get there before they close everything. Everything was closed. They were like, you couldn't even. I paid. Oh, I paid five dollars in a vending machine for a sixteen ounce bottle of water hmm. last night mm. i hope it tasted good it was yeah. yummy yeah, there yeah we go. it was it was good i'm sure it was fresh from a spring well too. yeah you yeah. know if you're uh if you've already since you're already at the end of the podcast now just make sure you share it with that person that's agitated in front of you yeah say hey yeah. i've got something that'll calm you down 
Yeah, you need a little yeah. humor you know, for the next uh, yeah. approximately 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes. We yeah. have some things to edit out of this episode, and that's just the timer. That we- <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure how long this is going to run. I'm just guessing right now. About 35 minutes of fun. And I've been uh, thinking we needed to add video cameras to what we do, but now I'm thinking it's maybe just more not. fun to just <laughs> leave it this way. and oh uh, just, uh, just Oh, you just broke. Oh, bur- my eyes. Uh, you just broke. <laughs> Bernie Champagne, I, I I really wish right now that we did have video cameras like oh. you'd like. And so you just broke Bernie's heart again. No. Oh. But you'll have to wait till Saturday Night Live at Church Retreat. Yeah. You'll be fine. So the more details on that will be coming up shortly after the beginning of the year. Yep. April 12, 12 13, and 14, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 12, 13, and That's 14. That's not up. You know what? I just realized that is not up yet on Save the Date on the Church Events calendar. Yeah. Well. But. Those, that is in the events calendar link is in every episode of the show notes, so you never have an excuse to not know what's coming up. Unless and it's I not will in go, there. Well, yeah. <laughs> unless, so before you hear this tomorrow, I will take a moment and put that in. There won't be a lot of details, but it will be save the date. And there's a little button there that says add to calendar. Go ahead and do that. You can put so the guest you, speaker in there. Or are we letting? On, are we announcing that? Or are we letting that cat out of the bag? I, <laughs> Well, there he goes down the hall. I've I let guess. it out of the bag a couple of times. Oh, have you? Have we not, oh, yeah, we, well, to? Do we yeah, go do for it, it, Ken. Should we make him wait? Should we, we shouldn't tell him now. We should make him go to that. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, so if you want to know who it is, go to the events calendar. It's in the show notes. It's wholelife.church slash events, and I will put in who the speaker is this year. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that, and there's right next to add to calendar, there's another little button on the right, and that one says share. You can share on social media and text message. Let your friends know. Let's uh, let's set so another record just, of church just, retreat. Just to go ahead and and put a little more into there. Just another reason to go look this up. Okay. Fr- you will not want to meet, miss Friday oh, night's meal. Oh no, my Come dad would have been. And when you mm-hmm. see who the speaker is, It'll make see sense. if you can add it all together and figure out what's going to be happening. My dad, for the first time, uh, while he was here this past week, and he's not even that kind of a guy. And he was really impressed. <laughs> this is way too vague. Randy. Yeah, yeah. This is really fun, though. <laughs> I know. I like it. It's, it's, it's all perfect. right. Let's go. See I got to start together. cooking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're cooking now already. I'm cooking. He's cooking, guys. I just, wow. If anyone, I hope just someone. Be careful don't, not to burn yourself. That's right, I just hope somebody <laughs> might. Oh. <laughs> My new dream for church retreat is someone comes up and goes, you guys did not oversell Ken on 390. On episode 390, you did not oversell Ken on Saturday Night Live at church retreat. That's all. Someone, someone remember, please, because, man, this, yeah. this is some kind of glorious. It is. So happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thanks for listening. Share it with someone at the airport. Share it with a family member who might need a little humor during the holidays here over Thanksgiving this week. And thank you all for listening, and have a great week. <laughs> I can't even do that. That's it. <laughs> 